Welcome back to Great Taste of Manitoba, where it's canola, eat well around the world. I just wanted to let my belt out there. <laughs> we had some pierogies. You can never have just seven or ten. You have to have a lot more than that. A dozen. And a dozen. Uh, Ellen Pruden here from Manitoba Canola Growers, and we're uh, making veggie samosas. So now, this is something that I would uh, probably n not an attempt to make at home, but it's like the first thing I order off a of food truck mm -hmm. or whatever. So, but you're going to show us how to make it at home with ease. Totally ease, and you know. It's vegetarian, as you mentioned, so then that's great. And it's cut. It's couple component pieces so it's all just right. all about the prep we're gonna make the dough first and we're flavoring the dough with cumin so mm. we're adding our cumin Is that, that's all cumin that's yes, a lot of cumin. I know because we got a lot of dough it's right. three cups of flour okay. so we're gonna add in our flour and this like this dough recipe is again so simple we're gonna blend that together and we're adding in um, not hot water but warm water hot water really makes the gluten become really tight suddenly and you don't want that to happen so the trick is and this is something that I learned at the Canadian Green and Institute, uh, Canadian International Grains Institute, it's all about adding the water in first and so when you make a pizza dough or a samosa or even the pierogies, you could do this too, mm -hmm. you combine this, the flour and the water causes the gluten to kind of come together and then you add in your three tablespoons of canola oil afterwards. And canola oil and water don't mix, right? Like oil and water don't right. mix. This then helps it to keep that um, soft, doughy, stretchy, stretchy, stretchy gluten, and all the gluten stand, strands. Water first, oil second. Yeah, and okay. you're going to be so happy with this dough. So you'll come it together with your hands. It's a beautiful round piece of dough that you're going to make. The other trick that I've learned that I want to share is a wonderful culinary technique. Okay. We have our hot pan. You're going to add in your canola oil into it, and this is typically what they do with um, like Indian cuisine, but you can again use it any time that you're using a dry spice. So your oil's going to come up to temperature, you're going to let it wait for a second, and then you're going to add in your dry spices. Okay. So if you're using chili powder, cumin, you know, anything that's dry, because it's going to flavor. Do you see that? That's just gorgeous. Oh. And this is going to help to flavor the oil. Well, I guess it, you know, ultimately, when you add in the rest of your ingredients, it kind of disperses that, that flavor very evenly throughout. You even have like little lumps of spice or anything right. like that. And this is called blooming. Is that right? You bloom it's, your spices? Yeah. Is that it, right? So blooming typically, it can be in water or in oil okay. like this. And so then this helps to transfer and flavor the oil Ooh. and gives and spread it out. Then we would add in our onions and garlic. And then we're putting in uh, lentils, so it's the international you're the, the pulses, pulses. Um, and then of course some potatoes and we're going to simmer it down and it's going to then look like this fantastic filling so here. So how long does it take for it to kind of come together to get to that consistency? 30 minutes. Okay. Again you want to ideally have all your potatoes cut in the same uh, texture. You're going to add a little bit of water or vegetarian broth keeping with our vegetarian theme and then you're going to be making these wonderful tiny little pieces of Which samosas. They look like pro they look like they pro look like normally pro it's like samosas are you know Big, right? Again, yes, that's what my brother thinks. Everything should just be this gigantic <laughs> football. <laughs> but, um, I mean, again, it's a preference thing and you can make them just like this. So that's what we're going to do. And these are just going back into the fryer to um, spruce them up okay. again. So we've heated up our canola oil and you want to go to 375 because as soon as you start to add in, you see the bubbles. Oh, it's perfect. And the sizzle, it's perfect. It will drop down the temperature to about 350. Ideally, you want to keep that in that zone. And then this is just going to crunch everything up. Our filling is cooked. It's really about just cooking the dough and then getting it to be nice and crunchy. So Isn't this great? It is. And so now here's a, a question. Can you, let's say you wanted to make these and you know, you've already deep fried them a little bit. You, can you can you freeze them and then put them back, like if you wanted to bring yes. them out and then freshen them this Just way? Just give them a little fresh and that's totally what we're doing. And okay. canola allows you to take that heat. Yeah, so why canola? Like well, canola oil is kind of like the, the creme de la creme in terms of just versatility. Um, and so it's it, you can cook at a very high temperature with it, Very is that right? high temperature, but you never want to go that high. So canola oil has a smoke point where you would actually see smoke coming up at about 468. Sounds about that's right. too high. <laughs> In there. 
But you want to be at that 375 to 350 for any type of frying that you're doing. So the pierogies that we made, you could be doing it like this. Right. The samosas work so great. This recipe are, is made for a fry rather than a boil or a bake. And it just gets beautifully brown. Mm -hmm. You always want to season after you do the fry. So if you wanted to do a little bit of salt on there, you can, um, but never into the oil because that degrades the oil. Okay. And then ideally, you just save the oil, you let it cool. Cool, yes, yeah. Right? And yeah. so then, because we're not doing fish, I keep fish with fish and then, you know, kind of veggie things with... With that, yeah. yeah. Okay. And so you can let it cool, strain it through coffee filters, and you can reuse it. Reuse it, exactly. And so, just another silly question. So can you sort of eyeball this? Because I think a lot of times you would, you would you would you take the temperature of it, or you just totally, kind of eyeball it? you would use it? the temperature. Because I, I always eyeball it. I'm like a season it. pro. <laughs> yeah, well, then But that's... you want to have that bit, again, um, that you're going to get that bubble that's going in here. And of course, you want to practice safety, around right. hot yes. oil yes. and you never want to you know have your children around or any kind of someone no. that's like clumsy right my husband but perhaps. yeah I'm here I stand so yeah. I appreciate that well, this Thank is you. why I'm doing the frying <laughs> And then out they go again. Like, look how well, they plump, look, and they, yeah. but you know, just burst it up. And then, like, let's take a little, like, look at that crunch. Anything and then with inside, that shape is with the be filling, good. no, that looks isn't truly that phenomenal. gorgeous? Uh, I'm gonna have a little taste of this when we come back. Cassava cake, another great taste of Manitoba first. Uh, stay with us. Cheers. Cheers. You're watching Great Tastes of Manitoba, brought to you in part by Manitoba Liquor Mart. Enjoy responsibly.